Do you understand how easy it is for you to blame your parents for your problems? Think about all the negative self-talk that they have about themselves. What makes you think that your parents aren't depressed? What makes you think that they're not happy? That's a legitimate fear, wouldn't you agree? The fear of dying, fear of drowning, the fear of a bear or a lion. That's a real fear, isn't it? But is the fear of being judged a real fear? Is that, is that instinctive? Is the fear of people talking about you or judging you or thinking of, you know, that classic lo kya kenge signal, like, is, is that, is that from Allah? Or is that from the evil whispers of society and people put in your head? Way of Life SQ, keeping it a hundred. Assalamu alaikum, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm so grateful, thankful. <laughs> that you decide to spend some of your time here with me today. My parents have ruined my life. I know this title and the thumbnail and the da 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 is gonna be all very controversial and clickbaity all of a sudden, but the title uh, remains true. My parents have ruined uh, my life. I know there's a lot of people out there who feel that the reason their lives are not the way they should be is because it's their parents' fault. I'll be honest with you, I was one of them. Um, but I'm letting you know that our parents have done the best job they possibly could. And this is not going to be a video about bashing our parents. This is going to be a video about me talking to you guys about how we need to take accountability for our own lives. <clears throat> SubhanAllah. Guys, it's been a long day. My, my phone got wet and my phone's not working right now. So make go off of my phone, guys, and my phone gets restored. Otherwise, I'm going to have to buy a new one. And I don't want to pay for a new phone when my phone was working fine. This is all a test from Allah, but I'm happy with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed me with or tested me with. Okay, look, so I know a lot of people are out there. And, and just a reminder, our parents have done the best job that they could. They've done the best that they thought was best for us and they've done their best. So this video is not about bashing them and parents, why aren't you supporting your children? And you know, uh, no, usually my videos are talking to parents like, yo, get yourself together, but out of their lives, do the things. Okay, cool. But this video is gonna be about you taking accountability for yourself. Do you understand how easy it is for you to blame your parents for your problems? I mean, you're grown now. You're like 20 something. You're 30 something. And yet you're still bearing, you're blaming your parents for your problems? Granted, your low self-esteem, they played a role in it. Granted, those negative thoughts that you have about yourself, they played a role in it. Granted, your self-image that it's this big, they played a role in it. I get all those things. But my question to you is how long for how long more are we going to blame our parents for our problems? When are we going to blame them for our issues? When are we going to stop that? Because you see, we're using our parents, though they may have done something, granted, to cause your you know, feeling of failure or whatever it might be, though they might have actually done something. My question to you is, for how long will we blame them and put the ownership on them instead of taking accountability for our own selves, right? Yeah, they've done something. They've said something to lower your self-esteem. I get that. But remember something. It's called self-esteem. It belongs to you. So the moment you realize that, that's the moment you realize that I have to take control of my own feelings for myself. Look, I get it. I get it, right? You don't think highly of yourself. I get that, I've been there. I'm still there sometimes, right? But I want you to remember something, those are not your voices. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us? What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us? <clears throat> Excuse me. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us in Surah Nas, right? Protection, not from only the evils of the jinn, right? Not just from the whispers and the evils from the jinn, but also from the evils of people. You see, the same way that you know the shayateen or the jinn can have an influence over us and make you feel like you're possessed or whatever the case might be, so can human beings. So can the evil whispers and the voices and the negative talk of human beings affect you as well. The negative self-talk that you have, Allah SWT speaks about that. We want protection not just from the jinn kind, but from mankind who put evil and dark thoughts about you in your head. My daughters are like four and a half and the other one is turning three, inshallah, in September. When my three-year-old Haya was trying to jump in the water, 
okay, in the pool that we have, the above ground pool. That's where I dropped my phone. I jumped in the pool with my phone and don't ask me why. It was a mistake. <laughs> SubhanAllah. She was afraid to jump in. Can you guess why? Because she was afraid to drown. That's a real feeling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put inside of us. This is a survival instinct that even a child has within themselves. They understand the concept of death. They might not fully get it, but they understand that there is this type of life preservation thing in me that I got to do. Okay, that's a legitimate fear. Wouldn't you agree? The fear of dying, fear of drowning, the fear of a bear or a lion. That's a real fear, isn't it? But... Is the fear of being judged a real fear? Is that, is that instinctive? Is the fear of people talking about you or judging you or thinking of, you know, that classic Lokya Kenge signal? Like, is, is, that, is that from Allah? Or is that from the evil whispers of society and people put in your head? You see, you and I have to take accountability and own when it's our thoughts versus when it's the thoughts of others. When you start thinking negatively of yourself, that is not from Allah. Allah loves you. Allah made you. Allah is the best of creators. I, there's a video coming about a transgender. A transgender who wants to change their, their, their trans, I was going to say their gender. <laughs> they wanted to change their gender and I'm going to get in a conversation with them. And the goal isn't to convince them to not do it. The goal is for them to make them realize that Allah has made them perfect already. But it is you who feel imperfect. Well, like, change your gender. Change it. It won't make a difference. Change it. Change it. People have done it and they still feel as empty as always. Because the reason you're feeling empty is not because you are a male trapped in a female body. The reason you feel empty is something deeper that has anything to do with your gender. Leave that aside. That's going to be a separate video. Uh, get excited for that one because that's going to be a really, really good video, inshallah. <clears throat> These thoughts that you have about yourself are not your own thoughts and you have to take ownership of that. When you start thinking negatively about yourself, thinking that you can't do it or you can't pass or you can't make it or you cannot do something, when there's limitations being put on yourself, it might sound like your voice. It might. But can it easily be whispers of the shayateen, the jinn, and the whispers of human beings, your society, your parents, your household? And you have to acknowledge that, whoa, 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 these negative thoughts that I'm having about myself are not thoughts that are instinctively about me, right? Like the, the survival instinct. That's instinctive. That makes sense. These thoughts are placed in my head from your mom's nagging from your father's nagging, from your brothers and sisters and being compared to them and competing against them. That's what put these ideas in your head. And you got to remember out there that these are not your thoughts. So when you're having this, it comes down to you being super self-aware. When you're having these negative thoughts creep up on you like ants, they're like ants. If you let them grow, go around you, they're going to crawl over. You got to stop. You got to shake them off. These negative thoughts are like weeds. Weeds don't need permission to grow. They just grow. And the longer, well, lie, say it's not the truth. The longer you leave weeds to grow, the stronger their roots become. Say that ain't true. Say it. I would be damned yeah. if you think. Huh? She's doing hijama. But she just, uh, I don't know. She probably has to pick them up at the thing or something. I don't know. So sorry guys, I'm gonna show you a science experiment, right? You see your weed, our thoughts, our negative self-talk. This is my deck, this is the pool. Our negative self-talk is like weeds that grow. Look at all these weeds. Look at all these weeds right here, right? You don't believe me? You don't believe me? These are weeds. These are weeds, right? Here you go, here you go, look at this. Wallahi, wallahi, I'm pulling as strong as I can. These are weeds, the more the more you let them grow wild, they don't need, per they didn't ask my permission to grow. But the longer they stay untamed, uncut, the stronger, I'm going to cut my hand open. They won't, they won't come out. So these negative thoughts that you have about yourself are not your thoughts. These were thoughts planted in you without your permission, without your permission, just like these weeds don't need permission. And the longer that you've stayed away from actually acknowledging them, that's my phone. I'm trying to like see if it could dry, guys. I don't know. Make the offer my phone, guys. Make the offer, please. 
Please make see it doesn't even turn on anymore. It's boiling hot. Maybe I put it over here now. Right, the longer this is my recording station. Sorry. That's right, get my That's fine. Kiss good bus. Okay, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. Sorry. No cuts, guys. I want to show you the real the real experience, okay? Sorry, let me do that. Here, let's fix this tripod again. The more you allow these thoughts to go wild, to grow, right? These negative thoughts, oh, my hand's so hard. Well, lucky, guys, I'm not playing. You probably can't see it, but like, oh my God, like, my hands are like cut. The more you allow these negative self talk and thoughts to grow, because that's what's happened the harder it will be for you to rip it out of its roots. So I'm letting you know right now that these thoughts that you have about yourself are not your thoughts. But you have to be self-aware to know when are you having and feeling these thoughts. Shake your head if you're with me right now, guys. You got to be self-aware to know when are you experiencing and having these thoughts about yourself. And when you do, you got to own it and be like, Astaghfirullah. La ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la sharika lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadeer. Okay, let's go. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajeem These are not my thoughts. That's the voice of my parent, my sibling. That's the competition in me that was placed in me to compete against them and make them feel like my brother's 98 is good but my 96 is not good. That's all fake immigrant mentality and mindset. No. Wallahi, no. You're fine the way you are. If you want to challenge yourself to get a better grade, get that. Hey. Yes, babe. What's up? I didn't know where they were. Yeah. Excuse me. What do you mean they're not leaving? Send them down. What do you mean they're not leaving? Excuse me? Come down right now. Come down right now. Dua. Haya now. Don't you ever have to make me come back out of my seat again. Ever. Do I make myself clear? You're not getting a treat today at all. Have a seat right here next to the prayer section. Right here. You're in a timeout. You know that's mommy's hijama client. What's wrong with you? Right there. You know that's mommy's hijama client. Sit down right there. Have some respect. <laughs> These no cuts videos are serious, right? Because you have real life to deal with. I have real, I have children to deal with, and it's my job to instill discipline in them and self esteem in them to have them positive thoughts about themselves. So notice, I'm not saying that they're bad children or anything like that. I'm addressing the issue that they did. They did something wrong. They're not listening to what I'm telling them to do. That's something wrong. But then all of a sudden, if I start dragging them down, this and I'm going to have a separate conversation with them later on after the camera's off and everything. But come on. You know, our parents have done the best job that they possibly could. They weren't self-aware. Think about all the negative self-talk that they have about themselves. What makes you think that your parents aren't depressed? What makes you think that they're not happy? You get me? What makes you, there's, there's something going on in their minds and their hearts too. And they're projecting a lot of that onto you. It's not their fault. It is our responsibility. Notice I'm not saying it's your fault either. It is our responsibility to remove these self-talks. The next time something negative is happening in your life, I want you to pause yourself and ask yourself, hey, these are not my thoughts. What am I, what am I doing? I don't think of myself that way. I don't view myself that way. I can get better and change your story. Your whole life, your narrative, your story has been told by other people's voices, thoughts. Okay? Your narrative of your life's story has been taught by and, 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 and written by other people's voices and thoughts, your narrative. Now it's time to take control of your narrative all over again. Am I making sense? So in the plot mountain, if anyone you know knows about the you know ELA story writing, there's a plot mountain, right? I might just show the display the picture or something, okay? You're at the top now. Where you go from right now, it's like those interval or intermissions in those old uh, Indian movies that were super, super long, right? They had those intervals. So you could get up out of your seat and go use the bathroom. This movie is like three and a half to four hours long. They're like, yo, do you need a bathroom break, bro? <laughs> SubhanAllah. 
Right now, you're an intermission and an interval in your life right now. You need to say, okay, own it. Okay, my life hasn't been that great so far. Yes, there has been some things with me. I have been deemed a failure. I have been failing a class. I haven't gotten the job I wanted. I'm not married at the age I wanted. But what happens next? Tell the next part of your story. But, but then I regain control of my life. But then I realized that the happiness truly lies with Allah and I'm happy with whatever Allah gives me and I'm going to work my butt off until I make something of myself. That's a more positive story. That's a more healthy story. So my advice to you out there, stop blaming other people for your story right now. Take control of your own story and rewrite your own story, rewrite your own narrative. I pray that you guys benefit from this. If you did benefit from this, smash it with a huge thumbs up so I know that, hey, these guys are liking these types of videos so I know what to do in the future moving forward because I have a bunch of gems like this all day, son. All right. Uh, if you enjoyed uh, this video and you want to spend a little bit more time with me, click any of these two videos right here. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, you can if you want to. I don't really require that for you to be a part of the crew, be a part of the family. I love you all for the sake of Allah either way. And until next time, I'm out.